Hello YouTube, I'm Efren225 and today I have another SRPG Studio tutorial for you. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to make the shove command. You remember that from Path of Radiance? Shove your mage closer to the boss. Shove your healer closer to somebody who needs him. Shove people out of enemy attack range. Shove your friends. Actually don't do that, they'll get very annoyed. <laughs> So yeah, the shove command. There is actually a plugin that makes the shove command and a bunch of other movement commands such as smite, reposition, etc. But I feel that if you learn how to make a shove command in SRPG Studio without a plugin, then that will be a stepping stone towards learning how variables can be intertwined with commands. It's a very good way of learning the system, in my opinion. So that's why I'm going to teach you this, even though it might not be the most easy or optimal way to make a shove command. So let's get started. First, you need to set a couple variables here. I've already set everything up, so I'm just going to explain what I did. I have five variables here. X and Y are for storing the X and Y coordinates of the unit that is doing the shoving. And target X and target Y are for storing the X and Y coordinates of the person that they are shoving. And terrain is going to be for storing the terrain group of the tile that you are shoving a unit towards. And I'll explain more what that means later. We also have two ID variables here. You want to create these in a separate category. Uh, ID variables are for storing the IDs of units, items, etc. And then you can pass them into other commands. So that's going to be very helpful. I have just two here. One for storing the ID of the shover and the shovey, I guess you could say. The person being shoved. Also, go into your variable options here and make sure this box is checked. It should really be checked by default. I have no idea why it's not. But for some reason it isn't. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, we are going to go into Tools and Options. This is another option that you should set if you have not already. It says Display ID next to Data Name. That's going to be helpful because in this case, you want to know the ID values of everything that you're working with. Normally, you wouldn't uh, really need it. So, Terrain Groups. I'm going to explain that before we get into the Unit Command. A terrain group is basically an arbitrary category of terrain that you can put different terrains into. In this case, I have two terrain groups, one for things you can shove a unit into and the other for things you can't shove a unit into. You can't really check if the unit you're shoving can move onto the terrain that you're shoving them into without a terrain group and this is actually kind of limiting, but you know, this is the only way I really have to keep a unit from being shoved into a wall, for example. You really don't want that to happen. So yeah, you can see on the terrain editor here, on the right, there is this button for terrain group. You can uh, just set every terrain in the game to that group. And if you're working with more than two terrain groups, then um, you can just make one group for things you can't shove into, and then just hopefully that's enough to uh, like um, just put all of that into that one group. All right, so with all of that set up, if you've got all of that set up, we are going to go into the players part of the database, select the unit, and then select unit events. Now in unit events, you can create custom commands for your units. So if you want to create custom commands for say, uh, going back to Path of Radiance, you can create Tanith's reinforceability. That's something we can get into in, the, in another tutorial if you'd like. Uh, you can create Ike's ability to command green units if you want. That's a thing too. Maybe keep the green units from being stupid. Right, so I've already created the shove command. Everything is already set up, so I'll explain what everything is and what everything does. But before I do that, I want to make one more comment. I said I wasn't going to use a plugin, and technically I'm not for this command in particular, but you have you may have uh, thought, oh, can't I just create the command once and then have it apply to all units? By default, no you can't, unfortunately. So there is a plugin for fixing that, courtesy of our very own Marky Joe 1990 so I will link that plugin in the description. It's a very good plugin. You know, Marky Joe has been making really great utility plugins, and this is an example of one of them. All right, so getting on to the command itself. 
So the first thing you want to do is set the condition for the command even appearing at all. In that case, it's being adjacent to one unit that you are allowed to shove. Unfortunately, you can't check here if the target for shoving is valid or not. Like if it's backed up against a wall, you wouldn't want the player to be able to shove it. But unfortunately, there's no way to check that um, just through the condition here. So we're going to enable distance. This is the distance part. It basically checks for a unit right next uh, within a certain range of the user. In that case, that's going to be adjacent. I just set it to one here. The range is one that's adjacent. The filter is going to be all units. You can restrict it so that you can only shove players or only enemies if you want. And there are also you can also set further conditions if you want to restrict certain classes from being shoved. That's another thing you can do. And for the unit you are checking against, you want to set it to the active unit by checking this little box right down here. Whenever you are uh, checking for a unit, like if you want to give an item to a specific unit, if you check this box, it will set the command to the active unit, which means that whichever unit is taking its turn currently, or whichever unit most recently took its turn, that will be the unit that is um, receiving the item in, in that specific case. Or in this case, it's the one we're checking against, etc. So as for the actual command itself, the first thing you want to do is just set the X and Y variables to the coordinates of the active unit. And that's very easy to do. You just select the active unit right here. And then you check this little bubble for X position and then you do the same for the Y position. That's very simple. Those two variables only track the coordinates of the active units X and Y position. And then we are going to learn a very useful command it is called extract map position. I will show you where it is. It is right here under this tab down here in the bottom right extract map position. What this does is that it will prompt the player to select a position on the map based on certain conditions that you input. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm asking for a unit. You can also ask for a position instead of just the unit, and then you can filter out certain kinds of terrain. Uh, I am simply asking for a unit. It is going to be within one space of the active unit. And I will not, I will allow the player to select any kind of unit, player, enemy, or ally. And then you can also set the unit conditions here. Be very certain that the unit conditions that you set here are the same as whatever the conditions were for the command to appear at all. That's important. And then you have these variables here. These allow you to select which variables you want to store the X and Y coordinates of whatever was selected. And if the player selected a unit or if there's a unit in the position that was selected, you can select a um, you can select a variable to store that information to as well. Now down here we have action when canceled. Um, you can either disallow canceling, which will prevent the player from backing out of the menu at all, or you can select a switch that is flipped when the player backs out of that menu. And in this case, we want the player to be able to back out of the menu. So we're going to set this to self switch A here. And then the next command we are going to make is skip event. It's going to end the current event. And the condition for that is to uh, have self switch A be activated. So in this case, if the player backs out of the menu, the entire uh, event is canceled and the player is allowed to back out to the uh, movement of the unit if they wish. That's important because you, you don't want the player to like cancel their uh, cancel their shove command and then find that they wasted their turn completely because the unit has not b gone back to their starting position. Um, the command only, uh, this special unit command only considers the unit to have taken their turn if the command makes it all the way to the bottom and ends there. So the next thing we're going to do is we have to check what direction the target unit is in. So we have the active units X and Y coordinates in variables and we have the targets X and Y coordinates in variables. So what we're going to do here is that we are going to have a uh, variable here that adds one to the targets X coordinate only if this condition is met, which is X minus target X equals negative one. So what's going on here is 
if we have the target on position six and we have the user on position five, five minus six is negative one. So if X minus target X is negative one, that tells me that the, the, um, the unit's direction in relation to its target is, the target is to the right of the unit. And this goes for all of these other uh, variable additions with conditions attached. If y minus target y equals negative one, then clearly the target is to the south of the user, right? So that makes sense. And then we have, if x minus target x equals positive one, then the target must be to my left. So I'm going to subtract one from target x instead, etc. So what these are doing is, um, they are finding the destination of the shove target. And once we have found that, we can set the variable terrain to, we're going to take that variable terrain and set it to the terrain group of the tile that we are shoving the target to. So what you do is you set the variable to position X and Y are going to be target X and target Y, and then you check terrain group ID. This will store the terrain group ID into the variable. So then after that, we now need to get the ID of the unit in the tile being shoved to. Yeah, this is nice to have all these comments here. It's like having a video script. <laughs> so yeah, we want to find out if there is a unit already occupying the tile that we're shoving into. So we are going to store the unit ID of the unit in this position into the second ID variable that we made earlier. Now, if there, if you um, try to do this and there is no unit in the um, tile that you're referring to, the variable will be set to 9,999. So that's just the thing that the game does. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is we want to check if the terrain group that of the tile that we are shoving into can be shoved into. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the variable that we just altered, the one containing the unit ID to zero. And the condition for that is only if the terrain variable is equal to one. One is the ID of the terrain group that I made earlier, the one where I grouped all that terrain that I don't want people being shoved into, into that terrain group. Now this is all probably coming out very confusing to you, so I will explain exactly what's going on from top to bottom here. The first thing we did is that we stored the active unit's coordinates into two variables. Then we asked the player to pick a target, and we stored that target's unit ID and coordinates into additional variables. And then we modified the variable containing the target's X and Y coordinates based on what direction they were from the user. And then we checked the target tiles terrain group and stored that to a variable. And then we checked for a unit in the tile that we are shoving to and put that ID into a variable as well. Now, the next thing I'm doing here is that I'm setting the ID of the unit in the tile we are being shoved into to zero. That is what that variable represents, but I only want to do it if the terrain group that we picked up is the group that I don't want people being shoved into. The ID for that is one. So the condition for clearing that variable is terrain is equal to one, which is the ID of the terrain group I don't want to see. So then the final command is the actual movement command that moves the unit being shoved. And um, you can set the unit ID to your target for shoving and then the, you're going to set them to move to a goal. And the goal is going to be the target X and target Y variables from earlier. But we only want that to happen if there is no unit in the target tile. So this is only going to work if the second unit ID variable that we checked earlier is equal to 9,999. Because I said that if you try to set a variable to the unit, the ID of the unit that is in the target coordinates, and there is no unit there, the game sets it to 9,999. So that's how it all works. That is how the whole shoving thing works. The only problem with this is 
that you are still allowed to shove and then have that shove command fail because normally you can't shove people into walls right so if the only targets available are ones that would be shoved into walls then the game wouldn't give you the option to shove in the first place however that's the beauty of doing this in a unit event instead of a plugin because um, the plugin, if you know JavaScript, then the plugin is very customizable, but if you don't know that language, then going into the unit events here and doing it that way makes it a lot more customizable because, you know, what if shoving did damage? Well, I can go into the extensive command menu here. Uh, this allows you to, like, take any of uh, most of these commands and apply them to a range of units based on certain conditions. Like, I can make it... Um, I can make it reduce HP, and then I could set the start and range to be the ID of the unit I was shoving, and uh, just make it only affect themselves. And then I could make it so that like, it does a fixed amount of damage based on, like I could also like pass a variable into this, so if I wanted to do some calculation based on strength and defense and stuff, I could do that too. But uh, let's just have five fixed damage for here. And you can also make it a chance to inflict damage instead of always inflicting damage. And I better set this filter so that it hits all units. And there's also an animation. You could attach an animation to it if you wanted to. So that's all stuff that you can do. So this is actually a new thing. I didn't have it the extensive command before. But let's see how this all plays out. Let's see if... Uh, all of this works and I know most of this is already going to work but yeah now I get to show you so here we go here's a demonstration of everything I have shown you so far this is how it all plays out I probably want the animation for damage to happen after the unit has moved, but either way, you know, there you go. That's how to create a shove command, and you can, you know, you can do all sorts of things from there. If you want to create drawback, that's possible as well. You just have to check the tile that's behind you instead of in front of you, and you can make smite as well. You just have to check two tiles instead of one. You can make reposition. You just have to, you know... Hopefully that's a good uh, starting point for you guys. And um, if any of this confused you, I apologize. I'm not so good at video tutorials, but hopefully that was good enough. So whatever I decide to do next for a tutorial video, I'll see you then.